Welcome to Storytime from Space, a project of the Global Space Education Foundation. To learn how you can support this exciting project, please visit storytimefromspace.com. Hi, I'm NASA astronaut Shane Kimbrough. Today I'm going to be reading I, Humanity. I'm in the cupola of these beautiful windows looking down at planet Earth. Imagine that you could represent the entire human race living through thousands of years of history and science. The following pages contain the story you would tell about how we've learned Earth's place in a vast universe. Thousands of years ago, when I was a small child, I began to try to make sense of the world around me. One of my earliest memories was seeing the star-filled sky at night, resting like a dome upon what appeared to be a flat earth. Naturally, I thought the vision represented reality and wondered what the earth itself might rest upon and what might lie beyond the stars. As centuries passed, I began to recognize patterns of motion in the sky. I learned to tell time by the sun and to keep track of the seasons by observing changes in the sun's precise daily path. I observed how the moon changes shape in a cycle of phases that repeats every 29 to 30 days. Near the sea, I saw the tides changing with these phases. At night, I learned to navigate by the stars and saw how the visible constellations change along with the seasons. I began to use my navigation skills to travel. To my surprise, I discovered new constellations as I journeyed north or south. Clearly, there was more to earth and sky than I saw from home. With this knowledge, I soon understood what I saw during lunar eclipses, when Earth's shadow falls on the moon. The shadow's gentle curvature could only mean that our world is round. In place of my old idea of a flat Earth with a domed sky, I began to imagine the sky as a great sphere containing the sun, moon, and stars with our round earth located at its center. My new idea seemed to make a lot of sense. I could explain the daily paths of the sun, moon, and stars in my sky by picturing the great sphere spinning once each day around our earth. To account for the changing seasons and the phases of the moon, I imagine the sun and moon moving slowly among the constellations on the giant sphere. Still, there was one thing that puzzled me. My eyes could see five bright stars that, like the sun and moon, did not stay fixed in our constellations. But instead of moving steadily in one direction like the sun and moon, these five objects sometimes turned around and went backwards for a few weeks or months. I called them planets, and for a while I wondered if they had minds of their own. I spent centuries trying to understand the mysterious patterns of the planets. Finally, about 2,000 years ago, I hit upon an idea that seemed to work at least for a while. I imagined that each planet orbited around Earth in a small circle that turned upon a larger one, so that the planet would go backward when on the inner part of its circle. I used mathematics to make my picture of circles upon circles more precise, so that I could use it to predict when and where the planets would appear in the night sky. For more than a thousand years, I thought I had it all figured out. Earth was the center of the universe. The stars lay on a great sphere surrounding us, and the planets moved along their circles upon circles. But as time passed and I built better tools for measurement, my predictions about planet locations in the night sky no longer seemed to work well. I began to question everything I thought I knew. Could all my ideas about the universe be wrong? One day, I tried a new idea. Instead of imagining everything going around Earth, I envisioned Earth and the other planets orbiting the sun. I had long realized that this idea could explain the puzzling motion of planets, because a planet would seem to move backward whenever we passed it by in our orbit. I hadn't taken this idea very seriously in the past, but now I worked hard to test whether it might really be true. I soon discovered laws with which I could predict the locations of planets so precisely that I was almost sure my new idea was correct. I became even more convinced after I built my first telescopes. I saw moons orbiting Jupiter, proving that Earth was not the center of everything. I saw Venus appearing to change shape in a way that it proved it orbited the Sun and not the Earth. And I saw that the Milky Way stretching across my sky is made up of countless stars, which was proof that there is much more to the universe than meets the eye. By about 400 years ago, there was no more doubt in my mind. Earth is not the center of the universe, 
but just one of the planets orbiting our sun. Now that I knew the planets orbited the sun, I began to wonder why. To find out, I used the same approach that had worked so well for me already. I made careful observations, I looked for simple ways of making sense of these observations, and I used mathematics to make predictions that I could test with more observations. I called this approach science, and it soon proved my answer. The very same gravity that keeps my feet on the ground also holds the moon in orbit around the earth, and the planets in orbit around the sun. I had discovered that I live in a universe in which the same laws hold both on earth and in space. My new way of doing science also helped me create new technologies. Soon I was building more and larger telescopes, and each new telescope led me to new discoveries. I saw the ice caps of Mars and the rings of Saturn. I discovered two new planets that I'd never noticed with my own eyes. I also found many smaller objects orbiting the sun along with the planets. At last, I realized that our Earth is just one member of a vast family of worlds held together by the sun's gravity. I call this family our solar system. Most astonishingly, I became to realize that the stars are not mere lights in the night sky. The stars are distant suns, and each would appear as big and bright to a planet orbiting one of them as our sun does to us. I wondered if any of the stars really did have planets of their own, and if so, whether those planets might have beings who see our sun as a star in their night sky. I was rapidly learning that the universe is far larger than I dreamed in my youth. As I studied the arrangement of stars in the sky, I discovered that our sun is part of a great collection of stars that I now call the Milky Way Galaxy. The galaxy has so many stars, more than 100 billion, that it would take me thousands of years just to count them out loud. We live fairly far from the center of the galaxy, and our solar system orbits around the center about once every 200 million years. The biggest change in my perspective was still to come. For a while, I was unsure if anything lay beyond the bounds of our Milky Way. But as I built even larger telescopes, I realized that the universe is full of galaxies, some so far away that their light has taken billions of years to reach us. I also discovered that the galaxies are moving farther apart with time. Apparently, our entire universe is expanding, meaning that it was smaller in the past and will grow larger in the future. Over the past century, my knowledge has grown at an ever faster rate. I've discovered much more about the laws of nature that govern everything from tiny atoms to groups of galaxies. I've used these laws to figure out how stars and planets are born and how stars live and die. My understanding of the laws of nature has also helped me recognize that the universe contains some very strange objects, including black holes, which actually bend space and time. I've built larger and larger telescopes and have launched some telescopes into space where, they're, where they enable me to see forms of light that cannot pass through the air to reach the ground. Using computers to help analyze all the data, I've begun to understand the size and age of our entire universe. I've also confirmed that other stars really do have their own planets and that many of these planets have sizes and orbits very similar to those of Earth. I've even begun to travel out into space myself. I have built space stations from which I can observe Earth from orbit. I've walked on the moon. And while I have yet to go elsewhere myself, I've sent robot spacecraft throughout our solar system. These robots make me yearn for my own trips. Soon, I hope, I'll explore the mountains and valleys of Mars, walk across the ice of Jupiter's moon Europa, and sail the seas of Saturn's moon Titan. I often wonder if I'll find living creatures on these or any other worlds in our sun's family. Despite all I've learned, I still have many questions left to answer. I know what planets and stars are made of, but I've discovered that galaxies also contain a mysterious dark matter whose nature still eludes me. Stranger still, I've discovered that the galaxies are moving apart faster today than long ago. And while I sometimes say this is caused by dark energy, I really don't know what it is or why it exists. And of course I wonder if I'm alone or if there are others like me living on some of the billions of planets that orbit other stars. My imagination runs wild as I think of all different types of life and civilizations that might be out there somewhere. But for now, I bring my thoughts back down to Earth to reflect on all I've learned 
in a relatively short time I have made an incredible scientific journey. Where once I believed myself to be the center of the universe, I now know that I am just one species living on one small planet orbiting one ordinary star with just one of the billions of galaxies in a vast universe. Most important, I've come to realize that as I've learned more about my place in our universe, I've also learned more about myself. I may be physically small, but when I put my mind to it, I am capable of great things. For I am humanity, and I am still young. If I continue to build and learn, there's no limit to what my future may hold.